In this session, we are going to be discussing the different ECG features of pericardial and myocardial diseases. I would like to begin with a case scenario, which can sometimes be a perplexing dilemma in the emergency room. So, this case involves a 65-year-old gentleman who's diabetic and has a family history of coronary artery disease. He comes to you in the emergency room, complaining of chest pain that has been going on and off for the last three days. When you asked him to describe the character of the chest pain, he saw that it was very sharp and that it worsened when he took a deep breath. He's also unable to lie down because of the pain. On probing further, you also find that he had some kind of viral fever or flu-like illness about five days ago, but that seems to be improving now. So the presence of chest pain naturally makes you concerned as to whether there might be an acute coronary syndrome, and you take an ECG, and you find that there is a lot of ST elevation in all the leads from V2 to V6, and also in the leads 2 and AVF. So, here's a situation, which can cause a lot of difficulty if one does not think of other possibilities other than MI which might cause an increase in ST elevation. Now, this person was initially diagnosed with a myocardial infarction and was going to get thrombolytic therapy. Now, thankfully, in the meanwhile, a little senior physician who happened to be passing by looked at the ECG and said, you know what these ST elevations are? Looking pretty diffuse, they are all over this ECG. Which part of the ventricle exactly do you think is undergoing the infraction? And that kind of made the resident pause and rethink his diagnosis. And what this gentleman actually had with an ECG, which is also classical for that particular condition, was acute pericarditis, which is sometimes a condition that can be confused with a STEMI. But one needs to be careful and differentiate because thrombolytic therapy or other types of therapy for acute myocardial infarction are not without risk, and at the same time, one cannot afford to miss a diagnosis of STEMI. So, we will begin this talk by discussing this often present diagnostic dilemma, which is posed by acute pericarditis. What is acute pericarditis? It's simply an acute inflammation of the pericardium, which is nothing but the sac surrounding the heart. Now, the most common cause of pericarditis is infection, especially a viral infection. There are numerous other causes, some of which are significant, connective tissue disease, uremia, and diabetes. And it can also happen in the postmyocardial infarction situation, typically after a few weeks as healing is occurring, you can have a late occurrence of pericarditis. Another difficulty is that sometimes pericarditis can be accompanied by inflammation of the underlying muscle as well, causing a condition called perimyocarditis, which would make the findings potentially even more confusing on the ECG strip. Let's understand what the basis is for the ECG changes in pericarditis. There are believed to be current injuries, similar to an MI. During acute pericarditis, there are typically two distinct injury currents, atrial and ventricular. The atrial injury current is directed upwards and to the right, toward the AVR. And therefore you would find that in acute pericarditis, there would be a PR segment elevation in AVR. Remember, we are talking about an atrial injury current, and conversely, there would be PR segment depression in lead 2, lead V4 to V6, and it could extend onto other anterior inferior leads as well. On the other hand, the ventricular injury current and acute pericarditis are directed downward and to the left, and this causes ST elevation in multiple leads, other than in lead AVR. So understanding this, we now come to understand that one of the classical ECG features of acute pericarditis is diffuse ST elevation in multiple leads, and this is the reason why it can be confused with ST elevation MI. The ST elevation seen in pericarditis is typically concave up. The second important finding that you must carefully look for, because this area of the ECG can often be overlooked, is the presence of PR segment depression. The ST elevation in acute pericarditis takes time to resolve. It gradually resolves over a period of weeks, and later on, after the ST elevation resolves, you can help prevent subsequent T-wave inversions in the ECG. So how do you differentiate, or what are the differentiating features between the ECGs of acute pericarditis and ST elevation MI? Number 1. In pericarditis, the ST elevation is widespread rather than limited to a specific anatomic territory. If you recall, ST elevation in myocardial infract is classically confined to one anatomic territory, such as the anterior wall, 
the inferior wall, the lateral wall, and so forth. Pericarditis doesn't respect these anatomical boundaries, you will find widespread or diffuse ST elevation. Second, the ST elevation in pericarditis are typically upconcave rather than upconvex, as in STEMI. In general, the ST elevation doesn't exceed 4 mm in a case of acute pericarditis. Another important thing is that you would not find reciprocal ST depression in a case of pericarditis, as you would find it more often in a STEMI. Finally, T wave inversions, which frequently accompanied ST elevation in the case of a STEMI, but never occur in acute pericarditis. A T wave inversion does not occur in the presence of ongoing ST elevation, it usually appears much later after the ST elevation has resolved. So, this is an example of an ECG for acute pericarditis. You can find the appearance of ST elevation in many leads, including leads 1 and 2, all the way from V3 to V6. So, you can see that, you know, a lot of leads are displaying this ST elevation. You can also see that the ST elevation is up concave rather than up convex. Secondly, if you look carefully, for example, at lead 2, you can see the depressed PR segment, which is kind of downsloping and shifted below the baseline. All of these characteristics, especially when combined with a history of viral illness and a different type of pain than the pain experienced during STEMI, should raise the possibility of acute pericarditis. In the next video in this session, we will be discussing one of the associated condition with pericarditis, that is pericardial effusion. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support us to learn more. Thank you.